and welcome to today's special edition of Frightfully Forgotten because it's going to be Canada Day weekend here in Canada. So we're going to do a special Canadian horror movie for you guys. First, what are we drinking today? Uh, actually, there's no name for this. Oh. Today for Canada Day, we are going to be talking about the Canadian horror movie Happy Birthday to Me, which came out in 1981. It is directed by J. Lee Thompson. He's directed lots of movies, but most notable of all the movies he's ever directed is Death Wish 4. The Crackdown. <laughs> <laughs> he also directed the original 1960s Cape Fear. The movie stars Melissa Sue Anderson. She was in Little House on the Prairie. Tracy Bregman was in this. She was in all these soap operas. Like was... every soap opera. <laughs> yeah, basically. So the movie starts off like a typical 1980s slasher movie. Girl is leaving her dorm. She runs into one of the teachers, old bitch, walking her dog named Winston, <laughs> hey, this uh... asshole dog. <laughs> you know, all you guys spend too much time in the local pub. If you spend yeah. as much time studying, you would be in Harvard by now. She ends up being attacked by an unseen assailant, very Halloweenish, where she gets kind of strangled in this car, does the smart thing, and she plays dead, mm -hmm. goes limp, bolts. It's you, and then boo! Yeah, she yeah. gets a straight razor right to the throat. Her friends, who are waiting for her to show up in the local pub, very annoyed by a whole table of these drunken shriners. Ninety-nine bottles of beer in the wall. <laughs> who sings that? I've never seen or heard anyone in real life sing that song. Then they want to do it again. Yeah, well, one more time. <laughs> so they all hop in their vehicles. There's a bet they have to jump the bridge as the bridge is going up to like let a boat across and they do it and they make it but <laughs> yeah. the guy wrecks his fucking car <laughs> in the process it's super nose dives and just <laughs> yeah and it's a nice car yeah, it's, it's like a, a beautiful <laughs> car and they're all happy that they made the jump yeah, okay. I'd be pissed off that I wrecked my yeah, car. Yeah, like my fucking car. <laughs> this jump over the bridge sparked some flashbacks in our main character, whose name is Ginny. Her and her mother were in a car accident on that bridge, and her mother actually drowned. She's blacked out some of these memories due to trauma, and now they're coming back. Now Ginny's back at school watching some motorcycle race with her friends. Super French asshole guy riding this motorcycle. He goes back to his garage and starts fixing up his bike and somebody shows up, we don't know who. They start the motorcycle and the killer puts his scarf into the moving wheel and yeah. his, his head goes <laughs> into the wheel and dies. There's another one of their friends, a muscle man, he's lifting weights and Oh, it's you, hi. All these kids know this person. Put another 10 pounds on each side. You see the gloves again yeah. doing it. He super struggles too to lift it off. And he's like, hey, what are you doing? Put it back. And he's all straight, he's all sweating and everything. <laughs> Take a big weight. You see his balls <laughs> he just <laughs> drops it. Ah, and it just comes right down yeah. on his neck. Ginny, she kind of is feeling sad, I guess, about her mother. She goes to the cemetery. He's kind of following her because I think he kind of has the hots for her a little bit. He reaches into his pocket to grab something. She turns around and stabs him. All he had was a flower in his yeah. hand. <laughs> yeah, there's a disco. And it's funny because this is 81, but it's still the 70s, right? Yeah. It's still disco going on. Steve and uh, Ginny get a little close at the dance. They go back to Ginny's house and she all makes them like these nice shish kebabs and everything <laughs> with all this all these vegetables and good hunks of meat That's and no stuff. That's no snack. On. That's a meal. <laughs> yeah, shish kebabs are a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> It's not a fucking bowl of chips here. <laughs> they start kissing and my ass is burning <laughs> from, <laughs> from, the fire. from the fire that they're sitting beside. She sort of starts feeding him shish kebab and she just jams it right down his fucking throat. <laughs> and that's the infamous movie poster. Yeah, exactly. Her friend Anne comes over. She throws the keys from the window there and go oh, let yourself in. You know, I'm going to take a quick shower. She kind of almost blacks out when she comes to. She sees Anne dead in the tub with her throat cut. She ends up getting in contact with her doctor, her psychiatrist, who's been helping her through all this stuff. Shows her that there is no dead body. She's yeah. just been imagining all of this stuff. She ends up 
clubbing him in the head. And brutally, too, yeah, I might yeah. add. There's a lot of blood. Yeah, there's quite a lot. Her dad comes home from a business trip. He finds the scene. In the process of trying to find Ginny, he ends up finding this uh, summer house. There's all of Ginny's friends situated around this big table, ready to celebrate her birthday. And if you want to see what happens with uh, Ginny, with her dad, keep watching. <laughs> there's not one twist ending. Yeah. There's not two. There's actually, if you really want to count them, there's three twists at the end. Yeah. Another neat thing, too, about the movie is the motive, original, and kind of convoluted, something that Scream, mm -hmm. I think, may have stolen, is the real motive for the killing. Bad point about the movie is that maybe it's a tad too long. It's pretty, it's two hours long. It could probably be cut down to about an hour and a half, easy. Yeah, I, I think so, because there's a lot of plot points that kind of don't really go anywhere. It's still pretty good, like, it's a pretty original movie for at that time. You can tell that they're gonna try to capitalize on the whole special date movies. My Bloody Valentine, Happy Birthday to Me, right. Friday the 13th, you know, that type of thing. At its heart, this movie is really kind of like a whodunit, a good misdirection. Every character has a motive. Every character has some weird kind of quirk. It keeps you guessing the whole way through. When Jimmy stabs that Arnie Cunningham looking guy, <laughs> and you find out that she's the killer, you're still kind of like, oh, but is she? Elude to so many other people. It could be any yeah. one of them in the whole group. And there's a lot of characters in this movie. More so than most, most yeah. slasher movies. Yeah, and the character building in this movie is really good. They really took their time to develop yeah. all the relationships in this movie. You never see this anymore. No, no. no. And, and like even with, like, for example, Friday the 13th, not much development. No. <laughs> You know, so it's pretty original. The kills are great. Oh, yeah. And the effects are great. The way the killer kills. Every kill is so original. He uses his hobby or yeah. like... Against you know, them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the motorcycle yeah. guy is death by motorcycle. The weightlifting guy yeah. is death by weight. You know? <laughs> it's pretty cool. The music for this movie is really good, too. And it's not your 80s synth type music. This is no. more of a traditional orchestral score. Big and epic. And it really, like, it, it adds to every scene tremendously. If you want a good Canadian whodunit slasher to watch on Canada Day weekend, whether you're Canadian or not, please check out Happy Birthday to Me. Great kills, good effects, good Canadian film that luckily doesn't look Canadian. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it doesn't have that CBC yeah. feel to <laughs> no, it. No, it looks pretty good. <laughs> it's a pro-looking movie, so we did good by this one. I think so. I so, hope so. happy Canada Day and... Keep drinking.